Welcome to a brand new episode of Monster of the Week, the show where I dig up old beasts from ancient past and bring them to light for you to use in your 5th edition D&D campaign. Today we are talking about what is possibly one of the most notorious plant-based creatures from 3rd edition at least. Of course, I am talking about the Yellow Musk Creeper. These incredibly unique creatures can be found in the Fiend Folio from 3.5, and trust me when I say they are unlike just about any other plant monster. But first, let's talk about what they have in common with other plant monsters. To start, they are a plant, and they're pretty big. Most plant monsters tend to be large or larger, and these guys are huge, so they take up quite a bit of space. As you can probably get from the visual here, they are a vine-based creature, so they're going to be growing around walls or around some central stalk. Now, unlike many other plants, they are actually carnivorous, and they lure in prey by releasing a musk puff, as the book calls it, which is basically an odor that attracts creatures and lures them in. However, it does more than simply just smell nice. The spores released by the flowers on the vine actually force the targeted creature to make a save. If the affected creature fails its wisdom save, it stops whatever it's doing and will make every effort to get within the plant. It uses all of its movement speed just rushing to the center of this creature as fast as it can. Once it's there, it drops whatever is in its hands and stands inert. The book even goes as far as to say that if anyone tries to stop the affected creature from getting to the plant, the affected creature will actually attack people, even its allies, to break through and get to the Yellow Musk Creeper. Now what happens once that creature makes it inside is pretty horrific to be honest. The Yellow Musk Creeper attacks with sharp vines and thorns that latch onto the creature's head. The creature, still under the hypnosis of the Yellow Musk Creeper's musk, doesn't do anything to prevent this. These vine attacks do minimal physical damage, but actually cause a fair amount of intelligence damage as the creature's brain is literally removed from its skull. Now, unlike the Mind Flayer's brain extraction, this isn't necessarily an automatic kill. We're talking a D4 damage here, so it takes a couple of rounds, but eventually, that creature's intelligence score will drop to zero. When this happens, the affected creature must make a fortitude save. If it fails, surprise surprise, it dies and becomes food for this giant carnivorous plant. If it succeeds, however, it doesn't die, but it doesn't necessarily live either. What happens is the space where its brain once was is implanted with a musk creeper seed, and it becomes a yellow musk creeper zombie. And this is probably the most terrifying thing about this creature. It actually creates its own minions by zombifying them, but we're not talking typical undead zombies, these zombies are technically considered plant creatures. As such, they're not vulnerable to radiant damage or any of the other traits that you might expect to see in undead. The zombies essentially function as the regular creature, except without any of its special abilities. Technically, a zombie can be anything as long as that creature has a brain. However, for ease of use, you'll 99% of the time want to just use the zombie template that is included with this creature. The zombies themselves don't really gain any spectacular abilities, in fact, they basically just become classic CR1 quarter zombies. They can whack things, they can walk around, that's about it. What's interesting about these zombies though is that when they get in combat, they won't necessarily try to kill their target. What they'll try to do initially is disable their target, grappling them and pinning them to the ground so that they can hopefully drag them back to the plant. This way, even if the musk creeper is unable to stun and disable its target, its zombies can hopefully hold the target in place while it does its business. The only time this ever changes is if they feel that the parent plant is actually in danger of being destroyed. Then these creatures will turn to lethal attacks, trying to destroy the intruders before they have a chance to destroy the plant. The only other really big difference here between classic zombies and the yellow musk creeper zombies, aside from not being undead, is that when a yellow musk creeper zombie dies, within an hour, it turns into another yellow musk creeper. So in the heat of battle, this isn't gonna be too, too big of a deal, but if your players are in this dungeon to maybe clear out this plant specifically, if they fail to do so, within a few hours, these seeds will grow out of the host creatures that were holding them in their heads. So while they may succeed at cleansing the caverns this time, within a week, those plants will be grown back to full strength. 
Now on the bright side, those new plants won't necessarily have any zombies right away, but even without zombies, these plant creatures are still capable of inflicting a pretty decent amount of damage. Obviously their big move is hypnotizing creatures and enthralling them, or just straight up killing them. However, they do have some basic vine whip attacks that are nothing to sneeze at either. So the biggest question about these creatures is how do you use it in your game? Well to start off with, let me just say that this creature is relatively low CR. So this is a good challenge for a party reasonably levels 3 to 5. This makes them a great candidate for just a dungeon encounter. Maybe your players walk in through a room and they just see these vines covering the walls and the sickly sweet scent of this plant's pollen lingers in the air. Or maybe if the dungeon is seeking to protect some kind of treasure, the owner of that treasure has actually planted yellow musk creepers around the dungeon. Another way you can use this as well is kind of as a random encounter in the wild. Maybe one of these creepers was brought into a small village while it was still in its very immature sapling stage. The villagers weren't really sure what it was, and as it grew, by the time they realized what was happening, it was too late. So perhaps they come across a small village with a yellow musk creeper that's growing in the bottom of the well at the center of town. All the villagers in town, who were once just common folk, have been turned into these yellow musk creeper zombies. Upon further investigation, of course, they try to take the players and drag them down the well. There's a lot of different ways that could play out, but that could be a good hook for your adventurers just while they're on the road traveling somewhere. Now maybe you actually have a mid or high level party and you still want to use this creature. And if that's the case, that's totally fine. The nice thing about this creature is there's not really a whole lot to convert. It's totally fine that the zombies are just weaklings and little minions because that's all they really need to be. You just add more of them if the party's higher level. And as for the musk creeper itself, maybe just up in a size category. So instead of being huge, it's gargantuan or even colossal if you want to go all the way. And then just increase the DC for some of its skills and it's as simple as that. And of course throw a few extra hit points in there. But for a plant that size, you could totally have maybe some abandoned temple that is just overrun with these vines. In fact, the clip that I showed before the intro is from a movie called The Ruins, and that's pretty much the premise of that movie. I mean, the plants in that film get up to way crazier stuff than just luring people in with their odor, but seriously, if you're running an Aztec-style D&D adventure and you want plants to be a big monster, definitely check out that movie. It's actually not bad. I mean, there are tons of movies out there that are great for inspiration when it comes to actually building encounters, but... I already did a video about that. These creatures make excellent mid-boss or minions for a powerful druid enemy that you might have your party going up against. So if you're looking for just more plant monsters, these guys are great for that. One other question too that's bound to come up if you use this in your game is, can you cure the zombies? And there are a couple different answers to that. According to what is in the book, if the plant is destroyed, the zombies die within the next couple of days and then themselves turn into plants. So, you could rule it that if the party kills the plant, they only have so much time to actually restore the brain of this creature. Well, the only thing I can think of off the top of my head would be a true restoration spell or something like that, but ultimately that's up to you for how this is going to be cured. Everyone's DMing style and players are different. I know some groups that if one of the characters died to this thing and turned into a zombie, as much as that player would be like, oh man, I have to roll a new character now, they would think that was pretty hardcore and awesome, and that's kind of what they expect from my games. But I know for other groups that might not necessarily be your style, and if your players really don't want their characters to just be killed off by something like this, I know it can be kind of hard to swallow when your character is killed by a death effect, I'm looking at you, power word kill, you could always give them you could always give them an out. Maybe it turns into a side quest where they have to get to a certain place to gather some certain ingredients to make some kind of potion that can restore that character's brain back to normal. In the meantime, the player whose character is dead, or dead, can just roll up a new character who eventually becomes an NPC when their original character comes back. Or alternatively, you could just remove the brain removal aspect of this creature and maybe it's just a mind controlling effect. So once the plant is killed, all of its zombies, which are actually thralls, are then released from its control. Maybe there's some sort of small seed or something that was literally planted into the creature's head and when the plant dies, that seed is expelled. There are lots of different ways you could kind of play that, but that's definitely something you want to keep in mind before putting this creature in your game. Because there's nothing worse than running this encounter and then having one of the players or even multiple players turn into these zombies and then be like, oh, I didn't actually plan for what you'd want to do if you want your character to come back. And if that's not an option, decide that beforehand so you can say, no, that character is effectively dead. Overall, I think these creatures are awesome. Anytime there's a chance for a creature to turn one of the characters into some kind of monster, whether it be a wraith turning one of the characters into a specter, or a necromancer who raises them as a zombie after they're killed, it really ramps things up. 
Because I find players, if one of their characters dies, they're not happy about it, but they're usually fine with it. I mean, that is the game that we all signed up to play. But one of their characters is taken away from them, and they see it being used against the other characters, they really do not want that to happen. I mean, obviously, in battle, whenever they lose a member and the other side gains a member, that's never a good thing. But there's just something about having that agency taken away from you that just, as people, we hate. I think that's the reason why zombie movies are so popular. That loss of humanity is one of the scariest things that can happen to us. So, definitely a few things to think about. Hopefully, you find a way to use this creature in your game. I know I've used it in almost every game I've run since I discovered it. And hopefully you enjoyed listening to me talk about this creature. If you did, I'd encourage you to subscribe to the channel. I've got at least one new video every week. We've got all the social media set up. You can find links to Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and our Discord channel. All that good stuff down in the description below. And in addition to all that, if you'd like to support the channel in another way, I do have a Patreon set up now, which a few people have gotten on board with. And honestly, it means the world. It's really making saving up for that new microphone a lot easier. So once again, thank you very much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I will see you next week.